All right, my name is Captain Irving, and you're in F Troop. Now, oh, kitty. Don't panic. There really is a good reason for calling the episode that. We'll get to it in due course. Right now, the captain has been looking over the men's service records. Private Hoffenmuller? <laughs> I noticed that you speak Apache, Sioux, Cherokee, and Hikawi. Now, we can use you as an interpreter just as soon as you learn to speak English. He was able to bluff his way into the army because he memorized all the words to glory, glory, hallelujah. Trooper Duffy, I noticed something very interesting in your service record. What's that, sir? You were killed in action. <laughs> I was? It happened so fast he didn't even notice. But the biggest news is Corporal Agarn's record. Your enlistment is up next week. Really? Yes, I thought you might want to sign up now, so I brought along the re-enlistment paper. Agarn is all set, but O'Rourke has other ideas and talks him into holding off. We'd do better with one man in town all the time. Oh, sorry. I'm willing to make you vice president. Vice president? <laughs> it's not every corporal who gets promoted to vice president. <laughs> halt! Agarn reports to the captain that he's changed his mind and doesn't want to re-enlist. Captain Parmenter is devastated, but O'Rourke says the thing to do is give him a week's leave. Once he's away from all of us for a few days, he'll come back. In reality, he'll go to the Hakawi camp and make sure production is going smoothly until his enlistment runs out. At said camp, Wild Eagle isn't feeling very well. Roaring Chicken has the cure. What is in bowl? Juice of gooseberries. <laughs> Fermented sap of oak tree, six raw turtle eggs, round up tooth of beaver, good roughage. He's suffering from exhaustion. Their new brave is running everyone ragged. All right, you men, put your backs into it. How long does it take to make a canoe? And you get off your sitting bull and get more feathers for the bonnet. Come on, girls, come on. You didn't meet your quota yesterday. Flying fingers, flying fingers. Keep an eye on him, Tondaleo. <laughs> they haven't had a moment's rest since Agarden went native. Somehow he's managed to appoint himself boss of, well, everything. I think he's taking this vice president bit too seriously. This is the only life. I didn't think I was going to re-enlist in the army. Look alive over there! Take it easy, Agarn. Pushing him a little too hard looks to me like. Are you kidding? They love me. They think I'm a god. He has nothing but complaints, Leaping Lizard. Leaping Lizard? My friends call me Liz. At least they don't call him Daddy Warbucks. I tell you now, Sergeant, if you not get that Indian back into army, whole deal is off. Yeah, well, don't worry. I brought his reenlistment papers with me. You might want to tuck that away again. Ha! One, two, three, four! As I said, you may want to tuck that away again. It's going to rain. A rain dance? <laughs> there isn't a cloud in the sky. I know. He's right. There are many clouds in the sky, and they're leaking. Sir, I think we should send a detail up there and arrest him for treason. Then give him a choice, firing squad or re-enlistment. But Jane has a better idea. Before the Indians take you into a tribe, they always give an initiation. That's right, sir. No one, Agarn. I really don't think he's gonna be a blood brother. Except the Hakawis don't even know what an initiation is. Nobody's ever tried to join the tribe before. They'll have to make one up. O'Rourke is really good at that sort of thing. All you gotta do is uh, roll off a 500-foot cliff into the river and catch a fish in your bare hand. <laughs> then paddle canoe up 50-mile rapids pick up water snake. Also, you will kill buffalo with bare hands and bring back buffalo head. O'Rourke says, you can't be serious. I won't let them do this to you, Agarn. You don't know the Indian mind, Sarge. You're not one of us. When do we start, my chief? Better start now. You walk over hot coals. Oh, my bones. <laughs> And it's montage time as we watch Agarn perform all three of those tasks successfully. Roaring Chicken has no choice. Agarn can become a blood brother. We now mix your blood 
with blood of chief. <laughs> <laughs> He dragged a severed buffalo head, dripping blood, back to the camp. One drop of his own blood, boom. But while he's out, what are we going to do about all this? Why not let him be Indian and we all enlist an army? What? Wake up six o'clock in the morning, march around, eat a bad chow. Hey, now, wait a minute. <laughs> Roaring Chicken just might have an idea. If we can't get Agarn back in the army, we'll bring the army back to Agarn. Next morning, when Agarn wakes up, it's not by choice. That's my new job, Liz. What are you talking about? I've been made bugler. He got the bugle from the new brave. Who is it? It's my lizard, meet new brave. Sergeant O'Rourke, you're out of uniform. Not Sergeant, Grizzly Bear. Wow, that's a much cooler name than Leaping Lizard, right, Agar? Oops. Grizzly Bear? <laughs> you were right, Agar, and this is the only life. Morning, Liz. Morning, Grizz. Plus, you can do that. But we're just getting started. Time to meet the new chief. Busy Beaver. We now have Liz, Grizz, Biz. We're not done yet. Wrangler Jane! What are you doing in that outfit? Now she one of us? That blood sister. Her name, Misty Morn. You can call me Ms. Liz. Hi, Grizz. Hi, Biz. That was amazing. It's even more amazing that they pulled it off so well. Things are starting to feel all too familiar for Agarn. Roaring Chicken, as my medicine man, I'll expect that every morning at 0800 you'll have sick call. Yes, Chief. Grizzly Bear, as soon as chow is over, I'll inspect the teepees. Right, Chief. Thanks to New Brave, we have surprise breakfast. What's that? Chip beef on hard tack. <laughs> Grizzly Bear, make sure the area is policed. Right, Chief. Leaping Lizard, start leaping. You want him to do actual work. Now you've gone too far. Wait a minute. I don't have to take no orders from you. I'm an Indian. We're all Indians. Many changes around here, Liz. Well, not for me. This outfit's for the birds. <laughs> Turning in my moccasins and going back where I belong. Your uh, re-enlistment papers. <laughs> He's back where he belongs. And the captain has a new toy. Hey, what are you doing with that, sir? This? Oh, this is a souvenir. Chief Wild Eagle gave me this. Uh, you can have a lot of fun with a bow and arrow, sir. <laughs> oh, really? I've never fired one. Simple, Captain. Just put the arrow in the bow and you draw back and let it fly. Uh -huh. Like this? Then you have a long talk with the men who built that tower. Then you get someone else to rebuild it. Did you spot the good reason for the name? We're making fun of Indian stereotypes. How ugh, me got heat, big nose, make him much booger. We've been doing that quite a bit. Notice this exchange. Me think him you've come wrong, teepee. <laughs> oh no, this is the house I'm looking for. Lucy think him dumb animal no talk him good. Dumb animal engine talk more gooder English than Lucy speak him. Agar knows as much about Hakawi culture as his horse does. He's romanticizing it and redefining it to suit his own wants, and he ends up being this. <laughs> It's all woven into the story and the jokes so intricately and subtly you come away not even realizing that your attitude about some things has changed a little. If you're enjoying this, be sure to click the thumbs up button to show you like it. If you're not subscribed yet, punch me in the face right here and get it done. And don't forget that you can become a patron and help keep this kitty fed. The link is below. Until next time.